Greetings, dear ones. I am crying on a magnetic service. And so the message this evening is the same as it was the evening before. And depending upon that which my partner does, which will determine that which is then broadcast as an audio transcription. Well, I gave it to him last night for the first time so that he would understand. It would not be a surprise today. And in that, there comes a greater understanding and a better wisdom. For the things which we wish to present this evening are new, new to some. But we speak now about a premise that we have not spoken of before, not in this detail, and one that will then be very, very outstanding to you. <laughs> Perhaps a bit unbelievable. There's a premise that has to do with physics, but everything to do with you. A premise that has to do with the energy that you sit in now. A few moments ago, when we opened this door, we asked, is the man pretending? And we ask that so that you will have discernment and you will know. For here is a message that will go to the core. Here is a message that is unbelievable to some. And so because of its nature, we bring you the practical part as well. We fill a little of it with science. A three-dimensional aspect that will anchor that which might sound unbelievable. We present to you that which someday your scientists will see. Some of them are beginning to see it now, not understanding what it could mean, how it works, or what truly is the core. But you can't deny it's there. And in order to do this properly, we will present it in pieces and parts. Here's the premise. That as you open the door to that which is quantum in your science, you are going to discover the first kind of physics that is always benevolent. That is to say, you are about to open a door and look at something which is not linear which has a bias, the bias of benevolence. Is it possible that there is an actual energy in physics that is biased benevolently? And that doesn't make sense. Because physics is supposed to be absolute, that is to say, there are rules and then there are rules and then there are rules. You want to formulize it, and you used to want to understand that it might be random. We speak about quantum physics as being random. But is it? And if not, why would it be biased benevolently? This is going to sound like science, and it is not all science. We want to give you this information because it ties in with the creative energy that you are experiencing now, dear human being difficult to know how to begin, difficult to know how to explain this in a way that you will actually understand what we are saying. So let us start with this. Your science believes at the moment that quantum physics has to do with the way, the way small particles react. Particles that are so small, they are particles of light, they are molecules of DNA. So small you have to see them under an electron microscope. This is quantum mechanics. And it's only seen there. And 
now we're going to give you something else to think about. This that you see in the very small also occurs in the very large. And so we'll start there. We're going to start with the premise. And the creation of galaxies. And I have said it before that each galaxy in the universe has its own physics. And some of them are very similar. But all of them are different. And if you could know the differences, you'd wonder why. And I will tell you it's because of what's in the middle. Because your physics, 3D and quantum, is determined by what happens in the middle of each creative galaxy. The creation energy in the middle, that bipolar energy, that, that push and pull, what we have called the twins that are in the middle of your galaxy, which you see in 3D as a singularity, is really double. It determines your physics. And it's different for every galaxy. Science doesn't know that yet. And we give this to you so that when they discover it, you can say you heard it here. It gives credibility to everything else I'm going to say. Let us start with the astronomer. Dear astronomer, do you believe in God? And the astronomer will think for a moment and the astronomer will say, I am not one to define divinity. And it's not my science. And so, you'll ask him instead, all right, what do you see that might be interesting to you? And this is where the astronomer lights up and says, all right, I will tell you what is interesting to all of us. We've discovered something we don't understand. There are physical principles in large things that do not apply to orbital mechanics as you have learned them in Newtonian and Euclidean physics. And they will say it's odd to us that the galaxy moves as one plate, almost like the stars were pebbles glued upon it. It all rotates together. There has to be some kind of energy that holds that. For orbital mechanics as you know them has to do with gravity and magnetics orbiting objects around a fulcrum, which is a sun, seeks its natural place of orbit based upon its mass. Further away, closer together, the speed Smaller items go faster, slower items go slower than are bigger. That's what your solar system does, but not a galaxy. The galaxy has something in the middle which must be gravity-based, and yet everything moves around it as one. There is a unity there. We don't understand it. But that's not all. Then they will tell you something that you cannot believe. It has to do with what we would call the random factor. <laughs> so we're going to call this channeling the quantum factor. Something you didn't expect is happening before you. In your three-dimensional reality, Everything that happens on the earth seems to be in a random state, and that is to say a bell-shaped curve. If you were to roll a dice over and over thousands of times, you would see this bell-shaped curve, or you would see a consistency of randomness. And that is what you, what you call the way things work. That's what you expect. And there's no bias to it. Especially when you would roll dice. You expect to see a certain kind of statistical curve. 